Welcome everybody. In today's battle, we will be learning all about the Battle of Megiddo from the 15th century BCE. During this battle, we would see a showdown between the rising Egyptian Empire, rising out of crumbling its former invaders, the Hyksos, to invade themselves the Middle East, where most historians believe the Hyksos derive. The Battle of Megiddo would be a showdown between the new might of the Egyptian Empire's standing military under Thutmose III, going up against the largely inexperienced and mostly levy army of the Canaanites, raised predominantly out of the cities of Kadesh, Megiddo, and Mitanni, under the commanders, the King of Kadesh, and the Prince of Megiddo. The battle would see a showdown between somewhere between 10 to 20,000 Egyptians and 10 to 15,000 Canaanites. During this battle, the Egyptians would lose about 4,000 KIA and 1,000 WIA, or wounded in action and killed in action, while the Canaanites would lose about 8,300 KIA and about 3,400 captured in battle. The battle would be a showdown between the new technology, the Egyptian chariot, built upon the former technology of the Hyksos chariot, and the chariots of the Canaanites. The battle would be a bloodbath, as the Egyptians would dominate the battlefield with their new chariot technology, as well as the technology of discipline, of a strongly trained and strongly prepared military force. With all that being said, I'll see you on the battlefield. All right, guys, welcome to the battlefield. Here on the battlefield of Megiddo, we can even think of this as Har Megiddo out there. Uh, we are playing as the Egyptian Empire. Go figure, as Egypt. Uh, I don't even know if it shows the faction. It just shows the flag. That's interesting. This is the first time I'm actually watching a battle replay in Rome 2 that I've made. So really cool. We've divided our forces into two halves. And I'm going to control the... Right flank, the other controlled by the AI, controlling the left flank. Our troops are really cool. Um, I am going to actually slow motion a little bit first. Not just so you guys can hear this epic unk music, which is music from ancient Egypt, uh, but to take a look at our forces here. So for Egypt, we have a bunch of these chariots. And uh, making up our cavalry. We also have some missile troops, some Egyptian archers, and let's see if we can find them, Egyptian javelin men. Looks like some chariots are throwing some people around. Uh, we also have, I've got some, let's see if we can find them, here we go. Uh, Egyptian slingers, and we have some Nubian archers, which are really cool. Uh, Nubian bowmen. These guys would be from modern day Sudan. Nubian archers were considered elite light infantry by the Egyptian Empire. But we also have our infantry divided into half, or our, at least our heavy infantry. We have the auxiliary uh, Egyptian infantry. These guys are a little bit more suited for intense close up melee combat. But we also have. Nubian spearmen, again, really nice troops here. Uh, spearmen carrying these awesome shields. Look at these things. Uh, and the other force is the exact same. Uh, for the Canaanites, we have a mass of hillmen. These are kind of like levy infantry, and they don't have much organization to them, which is really great because that's how it happened on the battlefield. They also have some... Uh, somewhere out here, some slingers as well, I believe. But they too have chariots, and they're going to try to use their chariots. I believe they have about, they might actually have more than us, 
but they may try to use their chariots to their advantage. So we're going to try to utilize our infantry, our well-trained, better infantry, to our advantage out here on the field. But let's get the battle started. By the way, daily reminder to drink some water today. Hot out there in the shadow of Armageddon. So it looks like the Canaanite infantry are getting things started. Our javelin men, getting, I don't even know if they got any throws in. The archers also pulling back as the Canaanite infantry are like a giant mob right now. So it looks like our left flank infantry are moving in. We're going to focus on utilizing the Egyptian infantry. Uh, because they're a little bit better for countering ground troops, we're going to conserve the Nubian spearmen, I believe, for the Canaanite chariots, uh, where they're going to be a little bit more useful. And it does look like those chariots are coming in hard, as we're going to use some of our own chariots to try to block them from doing too much damage to our infantry. And it looks like the battle has started. I believe some Nubian spearmen are out on the center. This is a big force out here. Looks like I'm sending some of my chariots on the right flank to counter some of the Canaanite chariots out here. Looks like we've got a little bit of a lag. So the chariots are bringing the lag here. They're really cool. And my Nubian spearmen getting into the fight to help take out some of these Canaanite chariots. The numbers I'm running with for this battle for Egypt, we're doing 11,000. For uh, Canaan, 12,000. Those chariots are actually doing a lot of damage to my Nubian spearmen, as you can see. It looks like my lighter infantry are in position. Some of those archers and slingers have also got more infantry pouring into the center. We're going to raise the volume a little bit for you guys. That should work. Looks like we've got some breakage on our left flank. It's going to cause a bit of worry. But we do have more troops behind to hold that line. This wavering group of Egyptian infantry. This is on a scale of, I believe, I think we've got it on a scale of four to one. So each soldier you see here represents about four. It would have been in the historical battle. It's like we have a lot of arrows coming into this mob. Arrows and javelins. We often refer to the Egyptian Empire as New Kingdom Egypt. And this phase of Egyptian history followed the Second Intermediate Period. 
which itself followed the Middle Kingdom of Egypt. So, in the late Middle Kingdom, a group of chariot-riding Middle Easterners known as the Hyksos invaded Egypt and caused the downfall of the Middle Kingdom. They predominantly ruled Northern or Lower Egypt, and Egyptian-led rulers led from the South or Upper Egypt until the beginning of the New Kingdom when the Hyksos were driven out and Egyptian rule was reunified over the two regions. The New Kingdom would then expand beyond the Sinai Peninsula to try to conquer the Levant, which is modern-day Lebanon, Palestine, Israel, and even parts of Syria. And this is what we're seeing here, is that Egyptian invasion of the Levant. I think we can actually go to cinematic mode here. Ah, okay. Only by chariot. Which is a really weird thing, but okay. I'm still new to these, so I'm still trying to figure out how to do these battle reenactments. But really cool with Rome 2. So it does look like our left leg is actually having some trouble out there. We've got some routing units, as you can see. Some busted chariots. But the infantry on the left flank are holding, and that's what's important because my troops are rapidly overrunning the Canaanite left flank. And if I can get rid of the Canaanite left, then I can send my infantry to help win on the right flank, or our left. Looks like some of our chariots on our left flank are doing a good job at maintaining this position to prevent the Canaanite chariots from flanking around us. But we do also have some Nubian spearmen helping guard this flank as well. And it looks like the work of some of our lighter troops, I think these are Egyptian archers, are also getting a really good angle on that mob of Canaanite infantry fighting in the center.
It looks like we are making a breakthrough on my side of the center where my infantry are starting to route some of the Canaanite infantry and our chariots busting into the fight as well as we've driven off the chariots on the Canaanite left flank except for one unit back here and they may cause us some trouble. But what I'm more concerned about is taking this opportunity to drive my chariots into the breaking Canaanite force so that we can cause a chain route and hopefully not have to worry about the Canaanite chariots. So you can see a massive chain route happening above the mob of Canaanite levy infantry. By the way, these Nubian spearmen just look amazing. Look at these guys. And so here we go. Looks like we've got chariots pouring into the fight from behind as well. Knocking some of our troops onto, uh, onto the backs, but I think they can handle it. Now I do have to redirect some of my troops to answer to these Canaanite chariots that are trying to take out my Nubian archers. I can't let that happen. Gotta protect our boys. Because my own chariots are a little bit uh, predisposed at the moment. Yeah, I think we just heard somebody hockey the Nubian out there. It looks like the sun may be setting over this battlefield. As we continue to make huge breaks in the Canaanite infantry. And we're now in a mass route trying to evacuate the battlefield. Destroyed chariots everywhere. This may be the end of the battle. Gotta give a quick shout out to our Patreon subscribers. Folks that make all the match happen. If you guys are interested in joining, you can head to the link in the video description below. You can sign up for one of several really cool tiers. So we've got a couple of chariot units from Canaan trying to hold back our force from running down the retreating infantry. But it is chaos on the battlefield as our chariots ride down routing Canaanite troops.
that appears to be the battle, everybody, as we continue to run down the Canaanite chariots and infantry. This battle is over. If you guys like this battle, feel free to hit the like button. If you want to see more battles from Bronze Age Middle East, let me know in the comments below which battles you'd like to see. And if you want to stay up to date on all of our battle reenactments, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We'll end it there, and I'll see you guys back in the war room. After the Battle of Megiddo, the Egyptian king would require every king who surrendered after the battle to send one son to Egyptian universities in Egypt, where they would receive an Egyptian education. That way, when they returned to their homelands, they would go with the sympathy of an Egyptian point of view. But not only this, the Egyptian king Thutmose III would also require sending military expeditions into the Levant almost every year for the remainder of his life to finally pacify the region. One unintended consequence of the battle would be the word Armageddon, a term used to describe such destruction as to mean the end of civilization. And this word, which derives from Har Megiddo or Mount Megiddo, would derive from this battle.